question as well. That's I want to ask you something. Um, yeah, that's fine. What's your name? Leo. Leo, Leonardo. Leo, Leo, Leonardo. Uh, my mom, she has been Christian her entire life. Well, not her entire life, but most of her adult life. Okay. Uh, she has said to me, if she, I, I don't believe, I want to make it clear, I don't believe in any religion, but mm. I don't believe in any God. But my mom, since she's conscious of herself, she believes. She says to me that she has heard the voice of God in her. I was baptized. I've been to Christian churches and I've heard them speaking on what they call their tongues. My question to you is how can anyone in general be sure that the religion is the right religion? If I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Hinduism is one of the oldest religions in the planet. Um, I'm Colombian and uh, Native American tribes from my country. They have religions almost as old as humanity itself. Religion is probably older than time, you know? Well, since we humans are right, religion has been a thing. How can anyone be sure that their religion is the true religion? Yeah. I'm sure so many Muslims would say they also hear the voice of Allah or God. Many Jews would say they hear the voice of their own God. My mom would say they don't. Oh, my mom would say she has heard the voice of God. You know what? You asked a very sensible question. You know what? I thank you for asking that question because many people don't even want to think why this is the case. Because this is a person who has a critical thinking mind to understand critically how can it be so? How can religious ideas and ideologies apparently contradictory to each other, they can all be true and claim to be true. Okay, let's start with simple things. God exists. And if God exists, he communicates to the people why he created them. And the purpose of human beings created is to worship God. Now this has been expressed and stated by his chosen people that he raised among the people throughout times, we call them prophets and messengers, that you should worship, be grateful to God, praise God, and listen to the guidance of God. You know, avoid his prohibitions and follow his commandment because it is good for you. And fulfill the life that you have within those boundaries. That's why you're created so that once you die, this can be a transitionary period to go, go to the next everlasting eternal life the permanent life whether in a place of happiness called paradise or place of misery and sorrow and pain called hell this is the human the the you can call it the human project okay this happened throughout times god does not punish someone for not accepting that because he's just so he sends them a warner in Colombia, in the very, very past, it's possible, even in Colombia, it's possible that there was a warner from God, who God is, what they have to do, what is their obligation and object, you know, the, the, the purpose in life. Those who believed, they were the ones we called the one who submitted their will to God. Does anyone know the Arabic word for that? The one who submits their will to God? Muslim. And the one who is in that state of submission, that state is called Islam. Yeah. So all prophets and all messengers in the past, all warners that came, they came with this state of one's self to be called Islam, submission to the one and only true God. Can I ask you something? So then I understand this part, but God is perfect, right? Well, yeah. That's the idea. Of course. So wouldn't it be more perfect to just have one clear message that everyone can understand? Sure, I'm this is what I'm. No, no, this is what I'm explaining. So, whenever there is a community, let's say 4,000 years ago, there's a small community which is isolated from everyone else. You can't expect God to somehow think that these people can travel when they don't have the mechanisms of traveling, like ship, to go other parts of the world where there's a warner. But God is perfect. No, no wait, wait, wait. So from his perfect wisdom, you'd say it makes sense that that community will receive their own warner, their own prophet, their own guide. And this is exactly what God said. There's not a nation that God did not send a warner telling them, worship none but God and avoid false gods. So you are just like sensibly expecting and this is exactly what happened. But what happened is this, as people received these warners, not everyone believed some people believe some people didn't believe because some people thought like how am i going to believe in something that i can't see right there are people who can say i don't see gravity i'm not going to believe in it what is gravity well you can mathematically yeah. prove gravity no no can you see gravity you can mathematically prove it that's not the point 
Can you see gravity? You can see it on the respiratory. So are you saying, are you saying... With your eyes, like you and me, with our eyes, we can't. Mathematically, you can't see it. No, you cannot we're, see gravity, full stop. Wavelengths. You can only no, you appreciate... We can. No, mathematicians and, and you physicists. Can, but you also can't see air, but you can feel it, can't you? You, can, you can't see gravity, but you can feel it. You know it's No, no, you can't feel down. gravity. Uh, wait, wait, wait. You can feel it right now. We need, to, we, we, we need to clarify these misconceptions. Our five senses, right? Seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, feeling, all of these things, right? Gravity cannot be understood by any of them. Right. Gravity yes. can only be understood through effects that it produces. Right, but if, for example, if you went to the moon, if you, you know what I mean? You don't go to the moon. You yeah, let's to go, go to the moon, and no. then what? Do you see gravity? Let's go can you feel it? Here in London, there are places where you can be in zero gravity. You can feel that there is no gravity because you're just floating. What you feel is the gravity, the effect that it produces. Right, so you can feel it. No, not gravity. Right, effect, 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 gravity. effect, 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 right. So what I'm saying is, all the prophets and warners in the past, there are people who somehow thought like, we can't see, touch, feel, smell God. So we're not going to believe in him. There are people like that. They think they were smart. Anyway, so some people did not believe and some people believe. Whoever believed, they're the successful ones. They're the ones choose true Muslims and they will go to heaven, paradise, Jannah. That's it. We don't say, oh, because they didn't follow last prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No, they were Muslims at that time. They had their duties and obligations and they will be successful or they will be one in the loser depending on what they did as time went by some people didn't like this message within the same community they didn't like it like it says don't steal but this guy he wants that thing this thing he wants to just take it off from others either by them not knowing or forcibly Okay, so you have a thief and you have a robber and a, or a, what do we call someone armed robbery, right? Two different kinds. One still goes hiding in the darkest of the night or something. No one knows and he steals. And one in broad daylight says, give me your wallet with a knife or a gun on, his, on, on your head, right? There's two different kinds of stealing. So what we're saying is there are people who didn't like that because they wanted the, all the wealth or whatever. They wanted to have, say, sleeping with all the women they like. But God says, the law is no, you can't. You have to have within this marriage. They didn't like that law, so they will start changing these laws, right? So this message, the point I want to make is, to your question, the message then gets distorted. Do you follow, Leo? I follow. The message gets distorted. When the message gets distorted, so it no longer remains pure, unadulterated, true Islam. It becomes something else. It becomes like an ism. Buddhism, Zainism, Sikhism, thisism, thisism, yeah? It becomes a religion of its own right, a different religion, other than the original religion, original message that it was. That's why throughout the world, we see within those different ideologies, one thing in common. They're all trying to say there's a supernatural being that we should all worship, be grateful and thankful. But other things, they have mixed and change and twisted and distorted in terms of who this God is. Oh, God is a man sitting there in the sky right, with a big I beard and so I on, right? To the same point. Like, do, do, do you follow so I, far? Okay, I follow. Yeah. Right. So, but it goes back to the same point. You know, a perfect God, a God that like, you were talking about love, a God that loves you and wants the best for you and wants you to go to heaven and enjoy whatever heaven is or paradise is. Yeah. Why not? Thanks for reminding. Thanks for reminding. And, and, and just that. A perfect God in his perfection is wisdom he knows that he has created human beings with freedom of choice right but that's no, that's a little bit strange oh, wait 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 wait, wait. Leo Leo them, you're Leo them with the purpose Leo but then you're allowing them Leo to do whatever they want you need to really understand this point you cannot have it both ways you cannot have God making everyone follow by force and then say I need a free will as well otherwise I'm like a robot you can't have both either you accept that God has given you freedom of choice, a will, or God has made you into a robot, you have to believe in him anyway. So Which one would you like? So he created us, right? So he, God creates you, but with the purpose of following him, but he gives you the choice of not to follow him. It's a little bit God. God creates a creation. Welcome, salam How are you? God, alhamdulillah, God creates a creation which is different from other form of creation in which they cannot disobey God, like the angels. In Islamic theology, angels cannot disobey God. 
whatsoever. They cannot. And when they disobey, right. they go to hell. Well, no, no, they, they cannot. No, no, they cannot. It is not in their makeup. God did not create them so that they can disobey God. The Bible says they disobey and they declare. No, no, that's not the Bible. I'm not talking about the Bible. I'm talking about the Islamic theology. Okay? The Bible has a different theology about angels having free will. But in our understanding, angels, the way they're created, they cannot. Quran says, you know, in a more ambiguous term. Your angels don't have free will. No, no, the question is not free will. The question is whether they can disobey God or not. Their makeup is they cannot, they will not. Let's say it this way. They cannot or will not, they cannot disobey God. That's how the makeup is, right? So, God created another human beings, like humans, another creation like human beings, that we have a will in which we can accept or reject God with our own will. But God doesn't want us to go to hell. God wants us to go to paradise. But he says, look, I've given you the choice. You make your destination by exercising your choice. If you choose to follow me and my prophets, you will go to heaven. But if you want to follow your own desires and follow the footsteps of Satan, yeah, then you will go to hell. The decision is yours. So God, in his wisdom, he has made a creation who can choose their destiny, who can choose their destiny by following or not following God. So God, in his wisdom, in his wisdom, he's made a creation who can appreciate this ability that's given. You know this ability, the, the cosmos, the stars, they don't have it. Every single thing within this universe, they follow the laws of God. Literally, they cannot disobey God. This particular amana or trust was offered to the heavens and the earth. Right? Whether you call them inanimate or animate, none of them accepted this offer except human beings. God says it in the Quran, human beings accepted it. So human beings now, because they have taken that offer of accepting the free choice, they will have to make that decision for them, whether they want to go to heaven or hell. So it does not in any way somehow diminish God's perfection in his wisdom or his power or his sovereignty or his might because he created human beings with the ability to disobey him. Right, I get that. Can I give you an analogy? Go ahead. Let's say that I have a child. I have a child and to my child, he didn't choose to be brought into this world, but I give him two choices. I say to my child, right, I can either try to give you the best possible life I can or the worst possible life I can, but it's your choice. You choose whatever you want to do. It's a little bit it's not really free will, is it? It's like free will with conditions. Uh, you, you're missing some points there. You're talking about human beings as a child who has not intellectually matured, doesn't understand and differentiate between right and wrong, truth and falsehood, good and bad. Human beings, God already given us in two, but three different... No, 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 Leo, Leo, Leo. It's in, you need to understand our position first, right? Before you strom on our position. Our position is this. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Allah says in the Quran, he inspired within us the good and the bad. Successful are those who purified themselves and the losers are those, the ones who will be in law at a loss, who, who don't do that basically, right? Say so they do the opposite. So what we are told is even within our own self, in our makeup, intuitive makeup, you want to call it, the fitra, the natural disposition of human being, God has already inspired what is good, what is bad. So that's a first thing. He's already inspired within you and has taken something, a witness from you already before even you're here. But again, wait, wait, wait. Might not be the same I'm not like finished now. yet, Leo, I'm not finished. So you understand that. Before even we were born, we testified already as souls that God says, Allah to be Rabbikum. We all said, Bala, of course you are our Lord. And God says, be just in case you say later, we didn't know that you are our Lord or we were following our forefathers and so on. Several excuses. What happens is these innate belief about having a God, innate belief that we should worship God often gets clouded, takes over by conditioning by our family, by our society, by our ego and so on. So our 
value judgment which is supposed to be sound, they get conditioned and clouded, indoctrinated by lots of other external, internal things. And we know that, we know that. We know how today we are socially brainwashed by social media, right? Look at the young kids. They go into their whatever this TikToks and Snapchats and whatever it is, and they will try to put on makeups. They don't even adults yet. And display sexuality because they think, oh, this is how I'm going to look nice. But they don't realize how there are sexual predators exploiting them. Say, okay, show me a pose when you're naked. And these girls or boys are doing that without knowing this. This is social indoctrination and conditioning. So what I'm saying when it comes to the belief system, our belief system can get clouded. Okay. Prophets and messengers, this is the next step. Prophets and messengers are sent as a hujjah, as an evidence against us. So when they come, they uncover this fitra. They uncover the natural disposition which are clouded. And they establish through proof and evidence that indeed there is a creator. And indeed you are a creation. Indeed that individual is a prophet and messenger who has brought the revelation with proof and evidence. Guide proof and evidence, and then it's up to that individual now who are mature in their thinking, intellectual maturity, that they should say, Yeah, we should accept it. If you don't accept it with your intellectual maturity, knowing the difference between right and wrong, truth and falsehood, you are doomed by your own self. That is why God is just, He does not, He will not punish someone who doesn't have the capability of understanding between right and wrong, truth and falsehood. Okay. Like, for example, if a child dies, you don't expect God to put him in a hellfire because the child... Did... It no, is not fair. Course, right. Yeah. So what I'm saying is someone, say, who is insane, totally mentally incapacitated, the pen is lifted. There will be no judgment that God's going to send them in hellfire because God is merciful and He's just. So that's why we're saying to your question, why didn't God, for example, make everyone believe? He could have. God says so. If he wanted, he could have made everyone believe, but that would be like a forceful belief. He is giving people... Well, he with, perfect as well. That's heaven. He's given people the chance. Look, this is a unique creation of God. Listen, Leo, a unique creation of God in which they have the ability to even disbelieve on their creator. Look at the power and the might and the ability that human beings have. Not even to acknowledge their creator. It's a big potential power that you have. God is saying, with that power, have consequence and responsibility. If you use it wisely and justly, then you will be rewarded with paradise in which you will be there in happiness forever. But if you don't use your choice wisely and appropriately, then what awaits for you is hellfire. But God says what? Wait there. I will constantly send prophet messengers to guide you, warn you, instruct you, and bring you back to the right path. So there's many paths leading to hell, but God will empower you, you with prophets and warners and ambassadors and so on, even inspiring you in your dreams, even in your wake up, sudden thought comes. Give me an example. A worshiper of an idol is very much in meditation worshiping the idol. A dog comes, lifts the hind leg, starts irritating on the idol. He hears something, sees the dog, recognizes what's happening. Defilement of his holy God. He started chasing the dog. As he was chasing, suddenly a thought came to his mind, something like this. Why are you chasing this dog? Your God couldn't even protect himself. How can it be God? That moment was the moment of inspiration from God. If he utilized and accepted and abandoned that worship of the idols, he would have been brought back to the right track. If he didn't, he missed the opportunity because God gave him the opportunity to come back to the right path and he missed it. That's why we say constantly, even in our lives, the many of ways and means God constantly guides us. The Quran reminds us again and again do not follow the footsteps of Satan. Satan warns you. Satan commands you to do evil, commands you to do this X, Y, and Z. Abstain, stay away from. Throughout the Quran, it's all about warnings and glad tidings and who God is and what we should do in our lives. So even after that, you cannot say, 
Why didn't God force people? Because God has given us a chance because who we are. God made us in that way. In this makeup, we have to deal with it. If you are in the Titanic and it sunk, it's not point saying, who are the engineers that did it? Ah, oh, let's curse them and punish them. It's not going to help you because it's sinking and you need to know how to save yourself. You and I are here on this earth now and we are going to die. I am going to die. You are going to die. All of us are going to die. How are we going to save us from the hellfire? That is the important question that we need to address. Not because like God is so this, all these philosophical, theological, speculative questions. You can ask all of that. Islam gives you the answers. It is important for us to recognize that we are here and we need to deal with it. We are here with the ability to agree or disagree with the revelation. We need to verify it, whether it's indeed from God or not. We need to verify whether Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is from God or not, a messenger or not. If we can verify it, affirm it and assert it, then apply it to our lives and live like a Muslim. And you die like a Muslim, God guarantees and promises you that he will give you gardens underneath you, rivers flow. Whatever your heart's desire, you will get it. Paradise, where is, there's no sorrow, there's no grief, there's no pain. There is but pleasure and contentment, tranquility. And the best of all of that is seeing your creator. The atheists would never see God if they die in the atheism. And when they're in hellfire, they will ask, send us back, we will be good. Give us another chance. In the Quran, God says, this is what you'll do but you will not be given a chance. This is your chance. So use it. So when the atheist, for example, who says, I don't believe in God. Have you ever asked an atheist? Why do you disbelieve in a God? Is it because there's no evidence for God? Or is it because of your ego? Is it because you think you are so special, you're so mighty that you cannot bow down to someone greater than you? No, look, I, I can't stand here and say that God or any proof doesn't exist. I don't have a proof that it doesn't exist. I can't but we prove. have proof God exists, just like we have proof gravity exists. I'm not going to get into the conversation because I have to know soon. But to That's me, fine. To me, you can never prove that God exists in the same way that I could never prove to you that he doesn't. I think we are equal. In that uh, that's why I would disagree. I don't think you could physically prove to no, me. No, because you haven't spoken to me before. So you can't make that assumption. This is your, wish this, this is your wishful thinking. That's what I, I will say. I want to ask you something, for example. Go ahead. You say, you talk about um, the Titanic and all of these things. But so God knew, from, at least in Christianity, God is all knowing. He knows everything that's happening, that has happened, and that will happen. Yeah. So Allah, he, from the very beginning, he knew what was happening and what would happen with his creation. He knew that there would be sin. He knew that people would go the wrong ways. He knows that there will be people that will not go to paradise, but yet he decides to go through. He decides to still make the creation. He still decides to do everything. Mm -hmm. If he knows that there will be people who won't follow, if he knows exactly, you know, you people take risks because you don't know what's going to happen. You take the risk of doing something with the hopes that something good happens, but you don't know what's going to yeah. happen. God is not you taking any risks know. here. God exactly. is creating a creation. He knows. he knows even before they're created what they're going to do based on the choices. So why? No, because he's a creator. He can create. Look, let, let, let me. That's a bit of a wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Let's, let, let's really understand this point. If you are in your nature, in your inherent nature, someone who is kind, your kindness will follow. It will be expressed. It emanates from you because that's who you are in your nature. So when you go there, for example, you see a poor person or a starving person, you're not going to say, oh, today I'm not. You will automatically, it's like you can't stop yourself because you are a kind person. You will help that individual. Yeah. That's what Islam says. You should help the people who are in need. God, our creator, in his nature, he's a creator. Creation will follow. He can create in so many different combinations and permutations. You cannot somehow think, but I'm going to dictate to God. You can only create a world in which there is no sin. Or can, he can only create a world in which there is only sin or there is a mixture. Look, even philosophically, this is this is philosophically known. I mean, there's a, the whole uh, what's this concept called? Um, I think it's a problem of theodicy or something. I can't remember, right? Where God creates now to be the best of all the creators, right? To be the most perfect, the highest in his sovereignty. What do we expect God to create? 
Is he able to create a world? If I say, look, God can only create or only creates a world in which people obey him. You would say, oh, does he not have the power to create human beings or a creation who can disobey him? Oh, he has powerless. He has no ability. You will question that. Think about it. If God only created a creation like the angels who cannot disobey God and you are an observer. Look, this is hypothetical. You're thinking, does he not the ability to create a creation in which they can disobey God? Well, I mean, the, it's a fallacy. Can God lift, create a rod that is so heavy he himself can lift it? That's not a fallacy. Well, it's a, it's a, that's not a fallacy. I don't know the it's right not. A, it's, 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 it's a silly, it's no, it's a silly not an argue, hypothesis. No, no, it's not a hypothesis. It's a rhetorical statement. I'll tell you why it's a rhetorical statement. Rhetorical it's right not right a there. question. It's a rhetorical statement. It's like asking, who created God who is uncreated? Can you have a square circle? Think about this question. Who created... Okay. Who created... Leo, Leo, Leo. It's okay, Brother Hamza. Leo. Someone says, who created the uncreated? Does that make sense? Who created the uncreated? It doesn't make sense. Can God create means, does God have the ability? Can God do something, does God have the ability, right? So can God lift a stone? What is the question is asking is, does he have the power and the ability to lift the stone? People will say, yeah, God is all powerful. He should. Number one, at the same breath, they're saying that he cannot lift, meaning he doesn't have the ability to lift. So the question is asking, does God have the ability? and not ability at the same time. No, no, it's not partisan, it's a nonsense. As I said, you are asking, no, 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 it's not a question. It's not a question. I'll tell you why it's not a question. People need to understand that, Leo. You are saying, can God have ability and not ability? It's a nonsensical statement. To a question, to be a question, three things needs to happen. It must have potential answers. Let's limit it to two to make it easy. It must be free from internal contradictions. If I asked you, how many legs does the sun run on? Three or 21? Answer my question. My question had options, three or 21. Does the sun run on three or 21 legs? Sorry? Because the question has internal contradictions. This contradiction is, it assumes the sun has legs, but the sun doesn't have legs. So you are answering a question that I didn't ask. Does the sun run? Does the sun walk? And you say, no, the sun doesn't run. So that's why a question to be a question, it has to be free from internal contradictions. And it must have potential answers. The question about can God lift a stone that so heavy he cannot lift, it is not a question. It's a rhetorical statement by these poor, intellectually poor atheists and agnostics trying to make that argument to somehow think God doesn't exist. This is a silly statement to make. To come back, the idea that God, the concept that God, can he not create? Does he not have the ability to create a world in which there will be agents that can disobey? Yes, he can. And he demonstrated that. Look at the human creation. This is a good analogy. God has demonstrated to humans that he's powerful to create human beings in all possible permutations and combinations. Human beings come from you and I, from a father and a mother, man and a woman. That's one way of creating, originating human beings. There's another way. Only from a man only. Eve, a Hawa, alayhi salam, from the ribs of Adam, from a man. Isa, Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, is another way, from a woman only, not from a man. So you have a man, from a man was Eve, from a woman was Jesus Christ, and what's the other way left? From no man and no woman, that's Adam, alayhi salam. These four different ways of human beings' origination, God chose us all of them to demonstrate his creative might, his majesty, his power. Likewise, this is my humble understanding. God created human beings with disabilities and so on to demonstrate to us his ability, his might, that he can create agents in so many different combinations and permutations. Angels, 
They do not. لا يحسون الله. They cannot. They do not. But the Quran says they do not disobey Allah in whatsoever way. Okay. So when we say your mom is saying this and you're saying why are there so many different religions inviting us to so many different things if god is perfect why don't everyone follow the same way it's because god did not force upon us to follow a way on compulsion he gave us a way through prophets and messengers human beings go against that prophet against that messenger they not only do that they often distort it by themselves they change the scripture because they don't like it because it goes against their whims and desires. And by doing so, they not only mislead them, but mislead others. But God in his wisdom and his perfection and his mercy and his justice, he sent his final messenger. He sent his final messenger of this book, the Quran, in which there is undeniable evidence that it's from the creator, establishing undeniably that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is his prophet and his messenger, the final. So after this, if somebody wants to believe, man sha ayakfur, fal yakfur. Man sha yu'min, fal yu'min. Who wants to believe, let them believe. Let them. It's their own choice. God in the day of judgment, he will judge between all of us through justice and no one will be served unjustly. So in the day of judgment, when an atheist or rejecter of God comes along and says, but I didn't know, God says, look, I gave you enough evidence and proof that was explained to you. Why did you reject? In fact, God tells us in the Quran, Surah Al-Mulk, when this is event of the future, when certain people are dragged in chains by the angels of hellfire, they will ask, did they not come to you prophets and messengers and warners? These people who are going towards hellfire, being dragged in chain, they will say, yes, they came. But we belied them, we rejected them, we denied them. But they will affirm one thing, they will confess. Had we listened to the prophets and messengers or used our intellect, our akal, we would not have ended up in this place. So God is telling us even the role of intellect is such that it can help you, direct you and guide you to the truth of revelation, truth of the reality of things. But people, as you know, Leo, do not use their intellect properly. Do not use their sound judgment properly. If you ask many of the atheists, I mean, you know, it's because corner is a place where we have discussions with atheists yeah, yeah. for years and years. And what becomes and what becomes evident is they do not use critical thinking. I'm so surprised you're supposed to be the first person to reprimand us believers saying you don't use critical thinking, but we have to tell them where's your critical thinking. So Leo, you as an individual, because you don't, you said you don't want to discuss this matter now, I would humbly request you to reflect the things I said about Quran having undeniable, irrefutable evidence from God. If you so wish, we can have a discussion later, or now if you wish, to what show to you. I'm here until the sun sets and then we'll pray and we'll probably go. Nice. But, but as you probably know, many of us, and it is up to me, many of us, we come here every Sunday or most Sundays and you're more than welcome to speak to my brothers and sisters who you find comfortable with to speak to with camera, besides camera, outside camera and have that discussion. Oh, I'd love to talk to you then. It's just a bit of a rush. I know, I know, I know. I don't want to stop you and, 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 and no, keep you delayed. I hear your hmm? point, but... Uh... Yeah, so and you've already seen it, okay? I'm, I'm, my YouTube channel calls it Dawa Wise. But of course, many other channels are recording. So if you go to our channel, you'll find many discussions already where we have discussed with atheists, gone through their arguments and their counter arguments, the rebuttals and the counter rebuttals. It doesn't stop there and it will continue. Oh, me, brother. I could write an essay about this, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but one thing for sure is you need to decide for your own self, looking at the evidence presented from all sides and then you accept it. Because one thing for certain that you know, and don't have any delusion about it. You will die and we all will die. So it has to be not deferring too late, saying I will think about it later, but thinking about it right now. Because if you are not seeking the truth and you die, you will be in big, big mess. If you asked me, I already found my truth. Brother, it's a pleasure. Nice talking to you. You take care.
That was quick, Mansoor. What did you do? <laughs> no, he had to go already from before. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Alameen. If I were to just summarize then what we discussed so far, I mean, this gentleman, a young, very uh, smart individual, came and asked a very sensible question about like why, you know, if God is so perfect and he's so wise, why are there so many different in religion? Why are there different ideologies and all claiming to be true and they're all different? And I explained why, because God created us with free will and through this free will, people often disobey God and distort the message that God sends. And that's why we see all these differences in religion and ideologies, but God in his mercy and his justice, he also sends prophets and messengers one after the other, even to the same nation. To the children of Israel, he sent many prophets, one after the other. And still, when they went, this, the sea parted with the staff of Musa alayhi salam. They, no, no one can do it. And they went on the other side and the army of the Pharaoh, Pharaoh drowned. And then literally like their, their feet isn't dry yet and they're building a golden calf to worship it. That's what we're talking about, human beings, human psyche. They're forgetful. They're often be someone who don't want to use their reason. They saw the evidence, the proof in front of them, and then they became rejectors of the evidence and truth. And this is why when people say, if Islam is true, it will be so evident, everyone should accept it and there will be no one who is a non-Muslim. But the reality is, even if the evidence was clear, some people would not accept it. Even if they saw stairs climbing up to heaven, even if they see the dead speaking, even if they were given mountains of gold, some of them would not believe. They will say, I'm deluded, it's an illusion. So belief is something other than just proof and evidence. It's something that one needs to work on their own heart, on their ego, to accept it. There even at the time of Rasulullah Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, someone knew the truth but they didn't accept it. We know that. That's the reality of things. So some people may not accept the truth based on peer pressure. If I become a Muslim, my friends will think I'm a weirdo. I'm wearing a hijab. I'm what's wrong? Like, oh, oh, I'm going to a mosque wearing a, a hat and wearing this thob. I must have been indoctrinated by ISIS and all these, you know, terrorist organizations. That's what people think. People fear repercussions. The people fear how the society will take them and think them. How the society, how their own family will consider them. That fear often prevents people from accepting Islam. But Alhamdulillah, we want to inspire people to remove that fear. Be a person in which you love the truth. That doesn't matter if the whole world went against you. You know that they cannot save you in the day of judgment. You have to save yourself. So once you have that empowerment that I need to save myself, that I need to save myself from the fire of hell, then nothing can stop you. Your friends, your teachers, your peers, your family, they cannot stop you from accepting Islam, accepting the truth. And that is what we want to bring to the people, we want to you know, rejuvenate the spark that they have within themselves so that they can then accept the truth. Because many people, Alhamdulillah, they know the truth, but it's just these things that needed. A little bit push. Isn't it true that you yourself have witnessed in Speaker's Corner many people declaring the Shahada accepting Islam. You have seen it with your own eyes here in this park. Why? Because of our little effort, your effort, your effort, your efforts that you are trying as best as you can, as humbly as you can, with the little that you know, imparting this knowledge to the people so that they can benefit from it. And this is what we say Allah has given us, this duty of obligations, the ability that we have, on the ability that we have. If I don't have the ability to convey, then I am not obligated to do that. But if I have the ability, then I can do that. So that war or inviting to people to Islam, we have been blessed with by Islam to continue this legacy. And we will do that inshallah ta'ala with the help and blessing of Allah and his permission so that people can benefit, people can listen to us and then save themselves from hellfire. And if 
what we have demonstrated here inspires you, my brothers and sisters, who are watching behind your phones, your tablets, your computer. Take the next step. Learn more. Empower yourself to convey the message of Islam through words and action. If you are at workplace, demonstrate to your colleagues that you're truthful, that you're reliable, that you're honest, that you have this good akhlaq, and they will ask you, how are you so? Everyone else is lying and cheating and deceiving. What makes you special? And we'll say, because I'm a Muslim. Your action will be the da'wah. And if you want, you can go and learn Islam, read books, listen to scholars. Don't take it from us because we are not scholars. There might be some, Sheikh Muhammad over there, but myself, I'm not a scholar. Don't learn Islam from me. Learn it from the shuyukh, the ulama. Go sit with them. Go find a mosque. Go find a center and listen and learn and then use it in practice and modify your arguments. And then you will see why Islam can reach through you the corners of the world, across the globe. Because you wonder, why are these people still not Muslims? Because they haven't reached, they have not had the message of Islam to them. But you can be the instrument. You can be the individual through which they can hear Islam. They can see Islam through your words and importantly, through your actions. وآخر دوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.